expecting the president to come out any moment now. Welcome back. I'm Rick Sanchez here in the world headquarters of CNN. Um, let me just be as transparent as I can with this. The reason that we're following this story now is because the president obviously is going to speak. But prior to that, there was a report that was put out by the Congressional Budget Office, the CBO. Dana Bash is still with us, and she's going to take us more into the significance of that report in just a little bit. But it seemed to be saying that this thing's going to cost a lot more than we, maybe we thought it was going to cost to begin with. And that's, that's uh, set off fireworks in uh, Washington. In fact, let's hear, first of all, this is Doug Elmendorf. He's uh, one of the directors of the CBO. Let's hear what he had to say, and then we'll bring it into our guests. And the legislation that has been reported, we do not see the sort of fundamental changes that would be necessary to reduce the trajectory of federal health spending by a significant amount. Dana Bash, why has this set off such fireworks in Washington, this statement by uh, Doug uh, Elmendorf from the CBO? It's actually, believe it or not, through all of this complicated uh, talk about health care, it's actually quite simple. And it is because one of the president's top priorities in reforming health care, and Democrats here too, and frankly Republicans as well, is to control the cost, the skyrocketing costs of health care for, for Americans and for businesses. That is the, that one, of, one of the key, key goals here. And what Doug Elmendorf testified is that the plans now going through Congress, the Democratic plans, they will not do that. In fact, they will have the opposite effect. And you've already had some conservative Democrats who serve in the House with Mr. Blunt. You've already had uh, some conservative senators ringing those alarm bells prior to that CBO testimony. So in the words of one conservative Democrat I talked to earlier today, what the CBO director did is give them validation to say, wait a minute, Mr. President, wait a minute, leadership, let's just, what's the rush? Let's just slow this down. And in fact, that is exactly what this letter that we got earlier today from six senators, bipartisan group of senators said. We listened, we listened to Doug Elmendorf, the director of the CBO, who we have to say is somebody who has enormous, mm. enormous authority and power here. Any director uh, of the CBO does. So, and do said, no, let's, let's delay it. So, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, let us assume that you were, in fact, the Surgeon General of the United States, which we know you are not. You have uh, decided to stay with us and b become an analyst for us, as you, as you are, one of the best in the business. And the president came to you and he said, man, this report from the CBO is rough. I don't know quite what to do, but it's uh, fourth down and we either go mm. for it or we punt. What do you tell him? Well, you know, I, <laughs> I'm not in the business of, uh, of consulting on these particular issues, and ne neither would the Surgeon General probably be as far as the specifics regarding numbers. However, ha having said that, Rick, I think what uh, is happening here to some degree is that, you know, medicine is as much of an art as it is a science. And to try and apply some of these scientific principles to the practice of medicine, I think, is what uh, the rub is to some extent. Hmm. How do you determine how much money some of the plans that the president is proposing are going to save in the long run. And it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, Rick. Uh, how, much is it, how much money do you save to keep people healthy uh, versus letting them get sick? I think people would agree that it is, you're going to save some, but, but how much really? And uh, yeah. you, know, you, don't, you don't really know. And even in the end of that CBO report, they said the long-term implications of some of these, uh, these, these committee bills are, are really hard to predict. What about that? What, what about that, Congressman Blunt? I mean, look, uh, you know, I talk about that all the time. Maybe it's just a bitter pill to become a better nation in the future. We might have to take a little bit of a hit now. Are you willing to go along with something like that? Or would your colleagues be willing to go along with something like oh, that? Uh, you know, again, Rick, I think the interesting thing about this is everybody is willing to work together or at least work to, to change uh, the system. And so often the president says, uh, we can either do nothing uh, or we can do my plan. And there are many more options between nothing uh, and uh, the plan that perhaps the president, the administration, or even this, uh, this expensive plan that's... Uh, being scored right now has and and we want to do that we want to be sure that everybody has access to coverage uh, we're willing to do e whatever it takes to get beyond the pre-existing conditions barrier we want people to have more choices cbo could be wrong and they may be wrong on this but uh, even if they're wrong two trillion dollars let's say let's say that they're wrong by half one trillion dollars uh, means that you have to cut Medicare spending and Medicaid spending, according to the, the advocates, by $500 billion over 10 years. You have to raise taxes by $600 billion over 10 years. Even if they're 50 percent, even if they're 100 percent above what it's really going to cost, uh, hmm. there would still be a big problem here. So we ought to work together to figure out how we get access to er for everybody into the system. And obviously, government's going to help with that. But risk pools and other things can be put together. Uh, and there is a great desire to make this system work better for people. Nobody wants to deny people health, nor does anybody want people to have to seek their medical care in the most expensive place possible, like the emergency room. 
It's interesting. We're getting a lot of tweets on uh, the waiting for the president. Uh, Mike Bates, uh, one of our regular viewers, says, uh, Rick, it's right there at the bottom, Robert. We all know the one reason that could keep Obama off the air. His teleprompter broke. <laughs> That's a bit of a cheap shot, but somewhat funny as well. And here we got another one saying, Obama being late caused Rick to devote 30 minutes and counting to talking about him to fill time. Coincidence? I think not. You know, you tweet, you do tweets, you Twitterers are very Machiavellian on this day. Maybe it's because it's a Friday. Nonetheless, we're with our guest, Congressman Dr. Sanjay Gupta and Dada Bash, and we'll be back in just a little bit, and hopefully so will the President.